Hi guys, welcome to Claudine Etienne Against Colorism. I wanted to talk about the presidential debates today. Colorism finally surfaced in the American presidential debates. I don't know who noticed the question that was asked. So finally, America is becoming aware of colorism. Not 100%, but it's pretty good. <clears throat> so, I mean, the whole thing about women's freedom, women's suffrage has been playing a role, whereas President former President Trump or um, presidential candidate Donald Trump has been the, I guess, the one who is training these women how to debate, basically, because if we remember correctly, um, in 2016, um, Hillary went against Donald Trump. Um, and then um, now Kam Kamala Harris. So he's training women to become leaders of politicians. But in my opinion, um, I still think uh, this current um, uh, political female leader is very weak. And, um, I, and I'm going to uh, address the colorism issue. So apparently it wasn't even Trump who asked the question, because I guess the questions were being asked. So one of the questionnaires asked her about assuming the black identity when she had in prior years claimed that she's not black. And this is really important because um, one of the countries that are one of the pivotal issues with the immigration is my homeland of Haiti. <clears throat> and of course, I, you know, I don't agree with everything that Haitian people do. In fact, I am battling against the colorism in Haitian communities. So in Haitian communities, if you're really fair skinned, you, they don't, People who are of really fair skin who are colorists, they will not consider themselves as blacks. They will identify as white, especially since the people will worship them and label them white as a, a word of affectionate, of, a, of affection, okay? Um, so when this was raised to this woman who had once claimed not to be white, black, I really, I mean, this was really exciting because then it reminds you of Tiger Woods. If you remember when um, Tiger Woods was being assimilated to as a black man, he made it very clear that he is Asian, that he's not black. Okay. So we know that Kamala Harris's Jamaican background puts her in the Caribbean where colorism is really prevalent. I mean, I even made a, a, a show not too long ago about a um, light skin sort of a Jamaican man going to Haiti and promoting colorism, using his wife to down to degrade dark skin Haitian women. So Kamala Harris um, is very dangerous for us dark skin women who have been in oppression, it's particular like because men like if you think of male female roles, you know how men may oppress women. One of the main ways that Haitian men oppress or abuse women without necessarily being in relationships with them is by using light-skinned women to put them down, okay? And the fact is, like, me, for example, I live within a relatively Haitian community. Um, it's mixed Caribbean, but nonetheless, I'm close enough in proximity to Haitians to be able to say, like, you know what, if Haitians, like, did not put down or look down on dark-skinned women, then I would have been able to pay for services such as my lawn getting done or, you know, getting my house pressure washed, I would not have to go through, you know, like I have to basically search for white communities to get my help, to get assistance because I'm more likely to get help from a white service provider than I will from a Haitian service provider because of colorism. And yet they will provide service for light-skinned women because they don't consider me as human or as um, the or as um, meriting any status, class, in society. So for Kamala Harris to have used the black identity when she had denied it at first is really an offense to black people, but particularly to black women who have been oppressed and victims of colorism. And then to imagine that this is going to be our leader. So to, uh, to have a light skin or mixed race um, female leader in a country that is so racist, one who is married to a white man, one whose hair is like, you know, the soft curls, whereas we are constantly oppressed for our dark, dark skin, constantly oppressed for our coarse hair, and, you know, you know, for the disadvantage of hair. 
you know, one of the things that, um, like, for example, I think Latinos or mulatto women use against black women is the long, soft European style hair as they use men to put us down. Like even today, I found like a Spanish, um, uh, a uh, pamphlet from one of those religious groups, you know, light-skinned women, mulatto, Spanish, apparently, women who think that they are better than me and using religion to put me down, like telling me that I'm going to hell because I, like, you know, and you think, why are they going to tell you that you're going to hell? Very easy. Because you're a dark-skinned woman that they will not accept in their churches. Or for that matter, to e- they don't even allow you to have a family. If they even see that, you have the opportunity to have a family. They will go to that man to destroy you so that they can, um, they rather acquire that man for themselves so that they can put you down. Even if that man is within your own culture, you're not going to their culture. Why would you go to their culture? They don't like you. So this is the oppression that we dark skinned women have from those mixed race women. I'm not saying all mixed race women are like that because a lot of mixed race women that I've met, like when I was much younger, were pretty tolerant and um, would fight. But most of the, but I have found like particularly Dominican women, they will um, promote putting me down as a dark skinned woman and other women will put me down as a dark skinned woman. Jamaican women have things against our hair. So light skinned Jamaican women, you know, they always are proposing to help me with my hair because there's a scorn against our dark skin. Um, people's um, hair texture, hair length, and hair um, in in general. So I am so glad that America is finally awakening to this to this oppression of dark skinned women, of black women. Okay, in all of the Americas that we are not aware of, because a lot of people will come to America and claim to be black so that they can reap the benefits, such as acquiring leadership to continue to oppress us. Uh, We Haitians, a lot of us Haitians, like me, I am oppressed by Dominican people. Um, particularly those who are coming from the island, okay? Now, in the United States, they may not necessarily show that, but my ex- my experience in my youth with Dominicans was that of hypocrisy, like two-faced, you know? They will pretend so that they can get, a, you know, a head start over you so then they could put you down. And the next thing you know that you will live a life of enslavement, Okay, because of your dark skin color before them. Okay, now do I find that with other Hispanics? Other Hispanics maybe do not have the kind of proximity to me, okay, as far as a Haitian person to be able to do that. So they won't do it. They won't do it because in America, I can always fight for my rights. But I, it has happened in Dominicans because they claim the black umbrella. It is a very dangerous thing when you find a mixed woman claiming to be white, black, okay, in America. Because if they cannot claim to be black 100% and fight for you, then they are going to oppress you. And it is worse than the Ku Klux Klan. The oppression of mixed race people in the Caribbean, in my experience as a Haitian woman, because they will use you, they will enslave you without you even knowing it. It's the new age racism, the new age enslavement, because they've always been doing that. If you think of the Lesta back in Haiti, most of the Lesta back in Haiti are living and serving light-skinned, mixed mulatto people in Haiti, including Dominicans, okay? It's because in the Dominican Republic, those um, Dominicans, those mixed-race Dominicans, they are considered as whites by Haitian people, all right? So they will oppress us. They will put us down. They will scorn us, even in America. And if we are making a, one step ahead, they will make sure that they push us back. And I have this as one-hand experience. So when I see Kamala Harris taking on the black name, it is the Ku Klux Klan, you know, disguising oneself as black to come and oppress us as um, black women. So I am glad to see that America is waking up to colorism, understanding colorism. All right. And um, Donald Trump and, you know, I, you know, Donald Trump, you know, yeah, he is training these women and, you know, like, you know, in his presidency, um, well, at least in his candidacy, we are seeing this, you know, because me, for example, I am safer in a 